Hey guys and girls, it's Blackjack with 396 Guitars. Uh, we're back with the Les Paul Standard. Um, we're going to go over what we've done and talk about the electronics and how we're moving forward with it. Um, so let's get to work. So, if you dig what I'm doing, and judging by the the view time and everybody's been watching my videos please like and subscribe it helps me out a lot um, yesterday we were going to attempt to put on new Seymour Duncan uh, Allen Co. 2 Pros their slash signatures um, this guitar has push pull coil splitters in it. Um, the owner, and I agree with him, doesn't really care for them. And th these pots with the push-pull function to split the coils and the pickups will not accept this exact uh, coil uh, pickup set. So we're still going to use these. Uh, we discussed it a little bit. We're still going to get these in the guitar. He is going to source a new set of Gibson replacement pots that delete the push-pull function. That's what we need. Um, this push-pull function will not work with those pickups uh, only because of the number of wires that it requires to, in the original pickups to come out of there and work with these push-pull volume knobs. That being said, we're going to just put the cover back on there and not do that today. Um, very simple, easy-peasy. Uh, what we are going to do, though, is the restring full setup. You'll remember we already did a cleanup on it. Now, <coughs> excuse me, um, <laughs> I did the cleanup, I did the fret dressing, I did the, uh, uh, the fretboard, I dressed, cleaned and dressed that uh, with boiled linseed oil, and I did fret erasers all the way up and down the uh, fret wires. Um, to reiterate, it appears that someone had attempted at some juncture in this guitar's life to do a fret leveling on it um, and did not finish it well. I used fret erasers on it for the time being. I believe we're going to be okay with that. Um, I did take a fret rocker and check all the frets. Again, I'm reiterating, refer to the last video, but some of them, there's one or two there, but I do, not, not enough of a problem to get in a twist over. We're going to go move forward with the setup. Um, today is Friday. We are in the studio with this musician, this guitar player tomorrow, my band. And I want to have this playable for him while he is sourcing out the parts that we need. By the way, I love it that he's knowledgeable enough and enough of a professional that he knows what he wants. And he's going to source the parts uh, based on my recommendation to receive these pickups. And then I'm, I'm going to do the install. Uh, these are his strings uh, of choice. They are 11s, Ernie Ball Power Slinky, 11 to 48. I love that because nothing screams rock and roll more than a set of 11s. Let's get these out of here. Uh, pause briefly while I load the stop bar. And get everything ready now. I when I cleaned this up, of course, we had the tunematic uh, adjustment knobs out of there, so we know that th this is all going to have to be adjusted. Not to mention the relief to accept the 11s, which are a heavier string and is going to put more uh, bend into the neck, more pressure, more tension. Um, and he tunes half a step down, which is where my band tunes. So. We're going to do that right now. I'll be right back. Stand by. Okay, we're back. Um, I test fitted the larger strings, the 11s, to make sure that we weren't getting any catching in the in the nut slots. And we look good there, so I don't think we need to cut any of them wider. Sometimes you have to do that when you're changing to a bigger string. Um, I'm just putting my graph 
graphite. I like to put a little pencil stuff in there. It helps the strings move in the nut slot. Just, just what I do. String is going to live in the saddle with the nut, and it's going to wrap here. So we're going to go a little bit farther past one peg, bend it. The first one's always a little tricky because there's nothing holding the stop bar in. It should hold there okay. And we are going to And as always, the first one wrap goes above the string peg hold, all successive wraps below, and you want them to kind of go down. And when it starts to grunt, you're home. And you should have at least two on, on you know guitars two I, I, I like to see three and we will see three later on but we got one good wrap above it and two and a half good wraps below it so that's going to lock that string into the tuning peg I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these we'll be right back okay everything's strung up um, got the tuner on this is initial tune up. Remember, we're doing half step here. Bear with me, folks. So what I do is I tune it up the pitch, and then I just drop down half a step. So it's E-flat to E-flat. Check them all again. Very nice. So I'm going to leave that there because I know I want to get in there. I just for the next step, I want to check the string height just to see how far away we are. But the next thing is going to be neck relief. We're low. Remember, I had both of those two pneumatic bolts out. So we need to come up all the way across. Now, we're shooting for just a, just enough so we can see 464 clearly on the low E and 364 on the high E. And then we're going to um, get that set close and then we're going to do the neck relief. So stand by. Okay, so strung up, we are tuned to pitch, we have our string height set really, really close. Um, it's time now to, I want to get that neck relief set because, you know, we are tuning this to bear with me, with my favorite feeler gauge. Usually I line up my tools before I do this. Um, we're setting our, our 
all the setup on this guitar is for half step down or E flat, call it what you want. Um, I'm curious where we're at now. It's too straight. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. too straight, we need to put a little bit of relief in it. Right is tight, left is loose. Since we're loosening it, we should be able to put relief in it without loosening the strings. And I can see that, that it just changed. Good. Oh yeah, dead on. In fact, I think I might have gone just a scotch too far. We're gonna, I want a quarter of a turn, we're gonna bring it back an eighth of a turn. That's how sensitive that truss rod is in this instrument. Dead on balls accurate. It's an industry term. You can look it up. 12,000 at the 7th, and I check the 7th and 8th fret. Um, let's stretch our strings a bit. Just enough to put a little on there. I'm going to let it do its thing and then I'll wipe the excess off. Um, remember, they have to slide back and forth over the saddle and the nut. And we're going to check our string height. We should be getting very close to where we need to be. Um, all the strings so they all went flat on us. So we're back to where we need to be. Huh, I like this guitar. I like this guitar. I especially like these Grover tuners. I am not a fan of them on the Grover tuners that I have on my Thunderbird, but I like those. Big meaty. They got something to hold on to. Um, String height. Shows every bit of 464s. Okay, we got to lower that one. That one's too high. The high E is too high. with string tension, it's not going to want to move. That's what I was afraid of. Gully, gully, gosh darn it. Come on, you. Yeah, got too much string tension on it. Stand by. Boy, this, I really like this guitar. It is responding well to every adjustment. Every bit of 464, so you can just see the line. That's what you want. You don't want it to go to 5. Same thing here. It's at just over 3, so we should be good there. 
I like that. I like it a lot. Might even just lower that one slightly again. Just a bit. Yahtzee. Love it. I love it when a plan comes together. I love it when a guitar agrees with what you're doing. I know this seems tedious, and I know a lot of you have seen it over and over and over again, but it, it, this is what has to happen, especially when you have everything apart and you're cleaning and you're taking everything out. Um, we are got to check the paper. A little paper thing. Yep, that one doesn't go. Uh, okay, so we got to lower our stop bar just enough there, but we got to raise it up here um, one more time with the neck relief. I just want to make sure. I know I do some of this stuff over and over and over again, but be, it's because I, I'm a perfectionist. I like that. I like that. I'm going to let it set, and tomorrow morning before I take it to him in the studio, I'm going to check all these adjustments again, tuning, neck relief, everything. I'm going to let it sit overnight. Um, last thing we want to do is this guy right here. Need to get a rag for this. Where do I have a rag? So this one I want to raise up until I can get a paper under there. That's really low. Really tight. There we go. Raise that one slightly as well. I like that. It seems like the two outer ones are tighter than the middle ones, but as long as they're not touching, we're good. And of course, because we did that, it might have changed the tuning. that on Somebody got the intonation right, so I don't have to adjust that.
not one buzzing fret. I love that. Okay, so Yahtzee. Uh, we're going to check all the neck relief and string height and all that stuff tomorrow again in the morning. Normally I like to let these things sit for a couple of days. I lowered this one just by guessing. This one still needs to go down. They were so high you couldn't even get a piece of paper. They were literally touching the string. that. Too low. Too low. I went too far. And this is all important. You know how I tout this because getting that sweet spot in the magnetic field to make your pickups really sing is all important. You don't want them too close, you don't want them too far away. And you can tinker with it slightly, but get it where you want it, but use these as guidelines. System for raising and lowering. I don't really care for Gibson style, but I have the same problem with my Thunderbird from time to time. I'm always tinkering around with that. This girl is set. Got 11s on it. We set the neck relief. We set the intonation. Was already really dead on within a not even an eighth of a cent difference. Um, we have good stop bar clearance, break angle there, break angle wraps on the tuning pegs. This guitar is ready to play. I'm going to double check everything in the morning and it might settle and need to adjust the truss rod. So I'm not putting that cover on yet. It'll literally take me five minutes to double check all the settings tomorrow. But I can't wait to give this to my, my new best friend uh, who hopefully will be working with us in my band. Um, professional. He has trust, entrusted me to work on his new guitar. Um, we are going to call that a day. Remember to like and subscribe. Um, I appreciate everybody out there that digs on what I do. Make your comments. I try to get back to everyone. Have a great one.